we're going to talk about sensors. And before we do that, I wanted to just kind of set the record straight of what is a sensor. Um, we get that all the time. And really, a sensor can be anything that you want it to be. Um, anything that you can get data from to use for purposes of analyzing that data can be a sensor. We've had them for years all around us. What you see on the screen here are just some examples of things that we see day in and day out uh, in the corporate workplace environment. You might have sensors at home though that uh, you use for a home alarm system. Many of us have uh, been used to sensors in the workplace at least in the lavatories for a number of years. So uh, a sensor again could be anything um, that you can get data from. But for purposes of today's webinar, we're really gonna focus on four different kinds of sensors. As you can see on this map here, they are used in a number of different places, a number of different applications. And our goal today is to give you a background on each one of these four that you see here how we traditionally see them used and talk about some use cases and then have some Q&A. So as Ben indicated, the first sensor type we're gonna go through is, uh, we'll call it the desk sensor. Uh, it's often referred to as a utilization sensor or a PAR sensor. They all really mean the same thing. Um, this slide really highlights the notion that the, the desk sensor itself uh, it's generally deployed on a one-for-one -one basis uh, tied to the number of desks or workspaces um, you're looking to monitor. Um, generally speaking, a desk sensor can be placed on or under a desk or within a small cubicle or, or office space on the wall. Um, you know, really either option works <clears throat> as far as the deployment goes. Benefits to the desk sensor. So the desk sensor um, generally is battery powered. Uh, you've seen advances in battery longevity over the course of time. Um, you know, years back, you'd see one to two year battery life. Um, now it's not uncommon to see 10, 20, 30 year battery life on, on specific applications, depending on how they're used. Uh, but it's, the desk sensor is a really nice tool for understanding um, your utilization, your, 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 your occupancy on a per space basis. Um, as you can see in the, the screenshot there, uh, each of those red dots represents a, a sensor under a defined workstation. Uh, all of that data aggregates back to a central repository um, for, for visibility and uh, digestion. Um, the other main benefit of the desk sensor is it allows you to understand real-time utilization. Um, generally, you'll see kind of kiosk style displays in, in an office entryway uh, that employees will use to navigate one space based on whether a, a seat is, is used or not. Um, additionally, in the market, you'll see uh, integrations with the desk sensor type, uh, whether it's a BMS, BAS system. Uh, we have a number of clients that control their lighting or HVAC systems using a myriad of desk sensor technologies. Um, and the big thing this ultimately comes back to is growing revenue by adopting co-working strategies to rent and share unused space. Um, as employers are coming back to office, um, they're thinking through how their space is or isn't going to be used compared to how it was used, um, whether it's hoteling um, or a hybrid workforce. The dust sensor provides that that analytical insight uh, into, into how this space is or isn't being used and is really a powerful tool um, for things like integration. So I'm Alex from XY Sense, and through my 15 years in the industry, I've seen all different types of sensors to help workplace space usage. Over this time, understanding utilization has been a top problem for real estate executives, but now it's even more of an issue. Organizations are experiencing the challenge of a new hybrid world, along with low utilized offices and all that downsizing pressure. At XY Sense, we make a sensor that is in this new, relatively new category, which is called area sensors. These sensors are typically installed in the ceiling and look down into the workplace. And they often look a little bit like a smoke detector or a wireless access point. The technology inside area sensors varies in the market. Sensors range from thermal or heat technology to Wi-Fi or to computer vision. At XY Sense, we use computer vision. And that means we've trained an artificial intelligence algorithm offline to understand and recognize people. 
We then deploy that algorithm to the sensor. Area sensors are typically able to understand and see people and pinpoint their location onto a floor plan. Most area sensors are anonymous without identifying who the individuals are. They're able to recognize people across any different type of space, whether it's breakout, kitchen areas, traditional work points or conference rooms. Generally, the coverage range of an area sensor is larger than a single desk. So when we saw before from Travis with the under desk sensors, that's a one to one. Um, with an area sensor, you can put it up and it can see a range of things. In fact, whatever's in range, it'll be able to identify the people that are uh, using that space. And what that means is typically you need fewer of them to cover your entire space. Lastly, different area sensors have different capture rates, often dependent on whether they're battery or not. So varying that from real time to potentially up to five to 10 minutes, taking a sighting every five to 10 minutes. Generally at XY Sense, our mantra is the more real time, the better, as it means you can see, verify and trust the data the sensors are capturing. So this is this is a really kind of emerging sensor market um, that that is becoming even more important as you think about a return to work. You know, once integrated with BMS or BAS systems, you can greatly reduce your energy consumption, uh, your lighting consumption. Um, you can tailor your your lighting and heating kind of time on and off based on the actual needs of of your office staff. Um, you can reduce your carbon footprint by allocating HVAC or lighting based on actual real-time demand, like I said, versus theoretical demand. Um, and all of this is is in support of meeting or exceeding well and lead building standards, um, which, which are very important, right? Um, as, we, as we think about the types of environmental factors that are important to one's organization, um, utilization, uh, again, driven by that PIR sensor, uh, but other things such as temperature, humidity, air pressure, light, noise, uh, air quality by way of TVOC, which stands for total volatile organic compounds. Uh, and then you see ECO2 or CO2 um, as kind of the de facto air quality standards on the market. Um, you know, and really to, to, to FM systems and the market as a whole, the sweet spot comes in when you're able to combine data sets uh, and really look at things like how does air quality impact utilization? How does temperature impact utilization? Um, how does temperature and air quality play off one another? Very important as you think about the well-being of your of your staff. Um, one, one other thing I'll say quickly on environmental sensors is um, the market supports a couple different approaches here, right? You can um, you can deploy what what I'll classify as an all-in-one sensor, so a single sensor that monitors many different environment, environmental metrics, or if you don't need all the environmental metrics, um, there are other sensors that support, say, one or two of the metrics that, that really kind of custom tailor um, your need. So, yeah, this section, we're going to look at what are known as uh, people counter sensors. Some other people know them as floor counter sensors. And these are particularly useful when you want to look at the number of people in a space. You're not necessarily worried about where they are in the space. You just want to look at how near to capacity, for instance. So in a building or on a floor or in a room. Uh, these sensors were originally developed for the, for the retail sector um, and they would help uh, clients understand the movement of shoppers around stores um, and through checkouts, etc. But, you know, over the past, I would say, four to five years, we're starting to see increased usage of these sensors outside of the uh, retail sector. Um, large uptake in usage within higher education, where a client will want to potentially measure the uh, capacity or how many people are in a lecture theater, for instance, or in a, in a building, or how many people are in my building at any point in time. Uh, the sensors can, you know, they would be positioned over an ingress or egress point uh, and give you, uh, can give you real-time data for how many people are 
in the building, on a floor, or in a room at any point in time. Uh, these sensors are slightly different to the open area sensors Alex just talked about, and again, different to the ones that uh, Travis talked about. These use uh, 3D stereo vision technology. So they're using uh, camera technology, um, but similar to, you know, to Alex and XY Sense, privacy is of uh, you know, paramount importance with these sensors. And again, like the XY Sense sensor, only metadata leaves the sensor. So we have no, no imagery leaving the sensor. There are, you know, in this particular sensor, we have up to four levels of privacy protection built in uh, to the sensor itself.